three, two, one, go. Okay. okay, so 10 seconds, wasn't it? Something like that. So guys, at Foz Asia, I walk over to the core boot table. I see a T4080S, just like mine, booting core boot. And it seems to boot and play a little video file over again in less time than it takes my machine to boot up system D crypt setup. So that was kind of amazing. And of course, I wanted to learn more. I must thank uh, Nine Elements who are exhibiting there, especially. Philip from Nine Elements Cybersecurity, we are a company doing open source firmware, uh, basically Core Boot, Linux Boot, Tiano Core, and also U Boot and trying to push the main open source firmware effort into a direction where it's yeah, get used by bigger companies and smaller companies, replacing the original BIOS firmware, which is mostly closed source. Philippe Deppenweiss, sorry if I butchered your name, for talking to me at length, and I took a lot of footage, and maybe I'll show clips of it, but I think it's best if I just sort of condense and summarize what I learned. The bad news is not that easy to get core boot running on, on Lenovo. That sucks. And so where is, how do I get core boot on your machine? I think he was mentioning System76 have it and maybe Purism laptops. You can buy from System76 and Purism hardware. Um, and I was asking things like, well, why isn't it on Lenovo yet? I can tell you because the whole firmware development is basically extreme legacy development. Um, and he was saying that you know, they have existing business relationships and they're just making bias with their existing partners and they're not, unfortunately, using open source. I mean, side and AMI, they can maybe do open source development, but they're never committed. Let's be honest, anyone who runs Linux on their, on their ThinkPad is interested on the, in this. So you have a, like a minimalistic, faster, verifiable um, boot. So it sucks that it's not really possible. They, they had a special machine with a special like modified uh, BIOS to do it, which is just like non-trivial to, to do, so. Yeah, yeah, we installed it on the safe and normally this flash chip is located on this spot here. Okay, so you just ripped it out and, yeah. and put a... Desold the flash chip and put a new, put a header on it. And that sucks. So there, the other thing I, I was curious about was you. So UFA is a specification. Yeah. It's written for having a um, um, uh, unified boot interface, um, but it's also a specification for defining how firmware has to be written. Core boot, for example, is not an implementation of UFI. It's a uh, firmware written 20 years ago. EFI, which all modern machines seem to be using. And it, it seemed to be one of those like, overarching standards that he wasn't really that excited about. But there's a project called Tiano Core, if you can see the sticker there, that basically takes core boot and adds UF EFI boot compatibility. It's really easy. We take core boot, use Tiano Core as a payload, and then we can boot Windows 10 with all requirements. But ordinarily, um, with Core Boot, since it is basically Linux based, they have, they're, they're more sort of keen on the, the Linux way of booting an operating system, i.e. k execing. We want to boot our system with a bootloader we wrote in, in the Go programming languages. Um, and then you can just boot into Ubuntu, for example. We'll just take a few seconds. Um, the, the kernel, which of course is, is only, um, Linux compatible, but it's sort of like, you know, cuts out the middleman. And it's a lot simpler that way, but oh well. But um, yeah, the the other interesting tidbits that I learned about firmware stuff is this whole um, DRAM training. You know. It needs to be trained. It's called training. And this is one of the most important things you have to do with firmware. You know, the more, basically, I learned that the more gigs of RAM you have in a machine, the longer it will take to, to boot because it needs to be trained to boot up. Um, otherwise, he was saying that hardware initialization 
should be open source. The thing is, the hardware initialization layer itself can be free because there is no IP in it. So vendors may tell you there is IP in it, but the reality is there is no IP in it. It's just doing basic hardware setup. Yep. It's always the same for all systems. So if you, for example, have an Intel systems and there are different types of Intel platforms like Ice Lake, Cable Lake, whatever platform, they all do the same stuff again and again I mean, and like, again. Of course, there's no real IP in it. The ACPI uh, tables, which enable Linux and other operating systems to sort of communicate with the firmware, that's pretty standard. It's, it's an interface. You can say it's a yeah. generic interface. It's currently also deployed on ARM, so they think about using ACPI as well, like x86. So it's a communication interface between operating system and the firmware and other um, parts of the, of the hardware itself. But let's say, um, in general, this initialization part of the hardware is really, really small. And with Core Boot, it's just 500 kilobytes or less. That means the whole initialization part is not really interesting. So as someone who's looking for simplicity and faster stuff at the same time, you might be thinking, what is the fastest Linux boot? And um, he was saying that Core Boot is running on something like 500 devices and those are... 500 different devices, but uh, the quantity in the market are tens of millions for Chromebooks, for example. And the bulk of them are Chrome OS machines. And some of those machines are booting as fast as two seconds from cold. Very impressive work, uh, Core Boot. Boot does things simple and minimal. So Core Boot is designed for security. The reason why we built Core Boot with a payload system and with less code is because Very of a minimal powerful. trusted computing base. And the security features inside Core Boot are designed for that case. And for example, if you do an update in UEFI and you just unplug the power, then the, the system will break. So you can't boot anymore. It will completely be dead in the most cases. So maybe some vendors added some backup technology, but most of the time your system is completely dead. So the, the, uh, there's some corruption on the, on the flash chip. So yeah. this specific so flash chip here. And then it's that. With Core Boot, there's a failure safety. You can never break the system. It's really? impossible because there are multiple copies of the firmware in the ship and you don't overwrite everything. You just overwrite the read writable copies. That means you have an A and B update scheme. And like Chrome OS, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Please like the video. Please tell your PC manufacturer to, to consider integrating Core Boot. And there are companies like Nine Elements Whoever, who should be able to help you realize a faster and better boot using open source. Cheers, guys. Please like the video and subscribe.